me here. This is our first attempt at a live YouTube video. Pete Pulse with Hughes Performance. We're going to talk about servicing bolt together torque converters. This looks like a hot mess. It's because it is. But we'll get this sorted out as I get the smartphone positioned so that we can make a video. I think that'll work. Ignore the uh, backwards logo there. So we thought we'd do a, a video and with all of our editing capabilities and uh, filming capabilities with normal crew, um, we'll try it live. So we have one of our Pro SSX bolt together torque converters here on the bench that I'm gonna take apart, walk through with you show you the ins and outs, how to swap the stator, swap the sprag, and I just kind of give you an overview of what's going on as far as servicing assembly, disassembly goes. Uh, if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you may have seen a recent post that we wrote uh, going through step-by-step -step, uh, how to do a stator swap in one of our converters. We thought we'd follow it up with a video. so. Here it goes. Uh, this is a 258 millimeter GM core. This is one of our hybrid builds. So it's got the billet aluminum back half, steel pump, warm color. We have socket head fasteners here. These are sometimes referred to as Allen head fasteners. We're just going to take these out. All right, so with all the fasteners removed, we have two dowel pins, and the dowel pins are very important because that actually serves to properly align and locate the impeller half of the converter to the bottom cover. Some people call this the front cover. There's no real right or wrong. Um, because this is solid here where the dowel pins are located, you can't just drive the dowel down through the flange. So this one, might come apart, but if you have one that, yep, popped right apart, but if you have one that's tricky, I'm going to throw that back on there real quick. We do incorporate a feature here. We have uh, here and right here some 3 8 24 fine thread holes that you can use with fine thread cap screws thread it in to use as jack screws to wind into the cover and physically push the impeller half of the converter off if it's fighting you to come off the dowel pins. Fortunately, this one is playing nice-ish. There we go. That's the impeller half of the converter. You can see the dowel pin holes that I was talking about here and two little steel dowel pins pressed into the aluminum half of the cover. We have the O-ring, which seals the half. Uh, this is a conventional uh, 75 series Byton O-ring. And of course you got the stator and the turbine assembly. Uh, you can go back and check out our torque converters 101 series. We cover all these parts in detail, how they work, stall speed, all that good stuff. This is really just more of a servicing video. So the stator, we have bearings here, bearings here, we have a stator cap inside here. We'll pull the turbine out just so you can see what's going on there. 
And of course, three piece roller bearing right here. And then inside the cover, there's a bushing that the turbine hub rides in. Put the bearing back on, put the turbine back in. And if you're going to do this, one of the important things that you need to remember is having the right tools for the job. It doesn't take much. We have a 5 16 Allen head here to take these bolts out. Uh, the jack screw bolts, if you need to use them, it's just a regular 9 16 head. And then you're going to need, to need a uh, small flathead screwdriver or a pick to gently fry off the bearing and remove the snap ring to get the stator cap out. And in uh, classic unprepared fashion, I forgot that. So this is probably a no-no for a live video, but I'm going to leave and go get that real quick. I'll be right back. <clears throat> And I'm back. Hopefully I didn't lose too many of you. Sorry about that. Bonehead move. So when it comes to taking the bearing off, it's not a tight press fit. So you can see I just gently pried it. Bearing pops right off. And then you have a stator cap retained by a snap ring. Some staters out there actually have a removable stator cap on both sides of the stator. We'll pop this bearing off too, so you can see our Pro SSX fabricated steel staters only have one bearing cap. The other bearing cap or stator cap is actually integral to the stator. And uh, this actually makes life a little easier as far as remembering uh, assembly order or disassembly order and also getting the spray oriented correctly in the stator when it comes to doing a stator swap. So, got the bearings off, now we need to get the cap out. And then we'll see how much the snap ring fights us. It's gonna cooperate, so popped right out. It is under uh, tension, so make sure it doesn't go flying across the garage, but just keep an eye on it. The stator cap will usually just slide out there, you can see, it didn't take a lot of effort. Um, these square lugs here locate to these notches in the stator. As you use the converter, sometimes you can get a little wear in these notches. That's normal, it's okay to reuse the stator cap. But if you get a little burr or a little metal hanging up there, sometimes the stator cap will be a little sticky if it is. You can use your pick or your small screwdriver to just gently work the stator cap out. Inside the stator, we have no sprag because this is actually a spragless setup. So this is a solid spline hub that uh, engages your pump stator tube and physically locks the stator to your stator tube. So can't turn it. So if you were going to swap your stator, you'd slide out your spragless tub or your sprag assembly. You'd grab whatever stator you're going to use, you'd transfer these parts over, and you'd reverse the order of disassembly to get the converter back together. Now, if you have an active stator, meaning that has a sprag in it or mechanical diode so that the stator can overrun, again, if you don't know what that stuff means or are uncertain, go back and watch the 101 series. We cover it all in great detail. Um, or you want to switch 
from a spragless to an active stator. Uh, the way our Pro SSX stators are set up, uh, a Sonics 10 strut mechanical diode drops right in place. So you can easily run an inactive stator spragless or an active stator with our diode. And the diode literally just drops in place like so. Big question is if you have an active stator with a sprag or a diode, how can you be sure that you get it in the correct way? Because it's an active clutch, making the stator active. It allows stator rotation in one direction and not the other. If you put it in backwards, it's going to be a back, bad day. The converter's going to act all goofy, and you're going to have to pull everything back apart to reorient the spray. So, slide this back out. There we go. We cover this in the episode in the 101 series on sprags and diodes. You can see the low rotation in one direction locks the other. A sprag or a roller clutch does the same thing. It's just a different mechanical uh, one-way clutch than what a diode is. Um, so when you're looking at the converter laid out on your bench, and you're looking down at it from the pump side, the, uh, the impeller, this part here, that's the transmission side, and you're looking down at it, you want this inner splined race in your diode or your sprag to be able to rotate clockwise to the right and to lock when you try to turn it to the left. If you remember that, looking down at the converter from the pump or impeller, that's the transmission side of the converter, but the one-way clutch, the inner race, should rotate clockwise or to the right, you'll always be okay and you'll be reassembling this in the correct order so that the stator is locked when it's supposed to be locked at high vortex flow and it is overrunning when it's supposed to overrun at low vortex flow when the converter is achieving a coupling. So with our stator, because it only has one stator cap, again, you can use the transmission side of the converter facing up towards you to be sure that you have this in the right way every time. The stator, uh, the side of the stator that has the removable stator cap, uh, here, that should always be facing up towards the impeller, the pump, the transmission side of the converter. So clockwise rotation towards the transmission side of the converter, removable stator cap facing up towards the transmission side of the converter, and you'll always have these parts oriented correctly. So we'll just go ahead and drop the diode in and uh, keep the spragless piece out since we have the parts, we can do it. And if you were savvy and paying attention, you'll notice that I put the diode in backwards the first time. So see if any of you caught that. So I put the stator in with the removable stator cap side of the stator facing up towards the transmission side of the converter. Don't forget the bearings. the same bearing on both sides. I just wanted to double check myself. There we go. That popped into place. You don't want to bead on the bearing, but sometimes it needs a little extra force. So, got the bearing on. Stator's back in. Before I put the cap on, you can see my inner race turning clockwise to the right. 
So I know I've got the overrunning clutch, in this case the mechanical diode, oriented correctly. We'll just pull that back out real quick so we can finish the stator assembly. Stator cap slides right back in place where it was before. And then the snap ring, you just get it seated in the groove on one side and then work it back in place. And you just want to take care to make sure that you have that snap ring fully seated in the groove so it doesn't come flying out on you when the converter's running. Otherwise, that's going to make metal and ruin your converter. Stator caps back in and secure. Yeah, the bearing goes back on. Again, it's just a light press fit. Removable stator cap side of the stator, again, faces up towards the transmission side of the converter. That's the pump or impeller. Set the stator back in place. Make sure that your O-ring remained in place. If it didn't, you can use some trans gel or petroleum jelly to hold it in place if it's not wanting to stay secured in the groove. And then you drop the pump back on over your dowel pins. And they are, on our cover, asymmetrical. So it'll only go on one way. Bump seated back on the converter cover, and you're ready to reinstall your bolts. Now, if you have one of our Pro SSX converters that's aluminum half, steel half, it's going to have 3 8 16 threads on the bolts. It's a coarse thread. Uh, I recommend using like some ARP Molly Lube or some engine oil just lightly on the threads as thread lubricants. So that way you get a lot more consistent preload on the fastener when you're torquing it to spec. Uh, if you put them in dry, you can, but you could potentially risk galling the aluminum threads in the cover. And you're also going to have to pull a lot more torque on the fastener. So if you put these in dry on the 3816 bolt, uh, you're going to need 51 foot-pounds of torque. If you lubricate the threads, you're only going to need 38 foot-pounds of torque to get proper preload on the fastener to ensure everything's tightened correctly. So you always just want to start them all by hand. That way you're not just ramming things home with a power tool and cross-threading stuff and ruining an expensive converter. Now, if you have one of our all-steel Pro SSX converters, uh, it's a little bit different looking flange. Uh, it's still located with dowels, uh, but it does use a smaller fastener, a 5 16 18 fastener. And if you guys liked this video, or at least it was some comic relief for me being forgetful and not getting the camera set up right in the beginning, uh, I can do another video on our all steel converter. Uh, but anyway, I digress. The 5 16 18 thread fasteners aren't going to use as much torque on the all steel converter. Uh, dry threads will get 29 foot pounds of torque, lubricated threads will get 23 foot pounds of torque. Again, that's only on the smaller 5 16 18 fasteners on our bolt together converters that have steel steel halves. So once you have them all started by hand, you can just gently run them home. And then you're ready to break out your properly calibrated torque wrench and tighten these fasteners to correct preload. I don't recommend just hammering on them with an impact because you don't know the amount of torque that you've generated. And when it comes to power tools, it's easy to generate too much torque and in a soft aluminum cover. 
uh, it's easy to damage threads or pull threads. So do yourself a favor, take the extra five minutes to use a torque wrench and ensure that all your fasteners are properly preloaded. Um, again, the specs for this half and half converter, half aluminum, half steel. Dry threads, 51 foot pounds, lubricated threads, uh, 38 foot pounds. Definitely recommend thread lubricant. I wouldn't use Loctite because, uh, again, you just don't want to have to deal with beating up these aluminum threads. Um, if you're insistent on using Loctite on these fasteners, uh, do yourself a favor and use blue. Don't use red or green. Um, but again, I would stick with just regular thread lubricant. So there we've, uh, I haven't swapped the stator, but that's the uh, same amount of work required to do a stator swap. We just converted this one from Spragless to mechanical diode to make the stator active. All the same steps apply if you're keeping it spragless or keeping the diode in there and you just want to do a stator change um, all the same steps apply in this video so hope you enjoyed it we appreciate your viewership if you like our content definitely consider subscribing to our channel check us out on facebook and instagram we have content going up there all the time and let us know in the comments uh, if you have any questions or what a dork i am for getting parts and tools and all that and we will see you next time. Thanks.